Got your Bibles. I'll be reading from a couple different portions. Actually, about three different portions. First, let's go to 1 John chapter 3, verse 1 2. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now we are the sons of God, and it doth not appear what we shall be. And, but we ye know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him, purify himself even as he is pure. John chapter 13, verse 14, thir I mean 34 and 35. A new commandment have I given to you that ye love one another as I have loved you that ye also love one another. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples if ye have love one toward another. Let's go to John chapter 14 now. I don't have to turn. I'm just going to hit three verses right here. Chapter 14, verse 15. If you love me, keep my commandments. Verse 21. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him. and will manifest myself unto him. Verse 23. Jesus answered and said, unto him if any man love me he will keep my words and if and my father will love him we shall we shall come unto him and make our abode with him and i want to go one more place john chap first john chapter five oh boy switched a little went a little for too far i was ready to start reading from revelation chapter five uh First John chapter five, verse. Come on, acting contrary like me. <laughs> first John chapter five, beginning at first verse. Whosoever believe on Jesus, that Jesus the Son of, is the Christ, is born of God. Everyone that love him that begat. Love him also that is begotten of him. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Father, for this time I could preach your word. I ask you to anoint my lips of clay. Anoint those who hear in Jesus' name. Amen. God's loving family is the title of my message. You know, I've heard this on several occasions. I preach against sin. I'm not afraid to call it out for what it is. If this book, the Holy Bible, calls it sin, I believe we need to preach it, preach against it and call it for what it is. Amen? Because I believe in preaching against sin. If we really follow the Lord, we will preach against sin. Sins like homosexuality and adultery. But in other things, you know, stealing and lying, I'm gonna say something. If you really love, but if you really love, I, that's, I'm getting ahead of myself. I want to say something. Years ago, I've heard preachers say this on more than one occasion. People ask, Do "You preach love," and their answer also is, "Love not the world." My answer is a lot different. You preach love, yes, if you love me, keep my commandments. I believe tonight, if we're going to be part of God's family, we're going to have to live and act different from the rest of the world. God calls us unto holiness. The Bible says, follow peace of all men and holiness, for without which no man shall see the Lord. I believe in that tonight, a life of holiness Bible says, be, for Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14, the Bible says, 1 Peter 1, 15, be ye holy, for I am holy. I'm telling you, it's a life of holiness. 
How do we know we're walking in love? Well, let, I'm just I'm going to go ahead and go to another verse I intended to read. You know, I believe when you love somebody, you'll treat them different. You'll treat them different from the rest of the world. The Bible says, Romans chapter 13, verse 8 through 10. Owe no man anything but to love one another, for he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. For this, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not covet. If there, if there be any other commandment, is briefly comprehended in this, one, in this saying, thou shalt love thy neighbor itself. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. If we are really born again, we are going to treat people different. We're not going to go out here as it says, verse 8, 10, verse 9. The Bible says, thou shalt, commit, shalt not commit adultery. If you really are walking in love, really love your neighbor as yourself. Love your brethren. The way the Lord says, you're not going to be committing adultery with their wives for fornication with their daughters. If you really love, you're not going to kill that person. You're not going to take a gun and shoot them. You're not going to take a knife and stab them. In fact, I'm going to, but the real problem is not the guns or the knives, the cannons or those weapons. You know what the worst thing is? Is this right here, your tongue. Oh, how many people have destroyed a brother and the Lord in the faith because of their tongue. They have been very loose in some things. Maybe they told them some things that they should not have told them about another brother. I know there's a time to warn. I remember in Bible school, I was dating a lady I had no business dating. And I'll be honest and tell you that years later. I'll never forget how a certain friend of mine put himself in line. I, I admit, I got angry at the guy for a while. But finally, I found out the truth about her, and I had to forgive that brother. And today, he's one of my best friends I've ever had. Thank God, by this shall men know you're my disciples, if you have love one towards another. If you see a brother about ready to fall, if you really love that brother, you will try stopping them before they fall. Amen. I believe it's important that we have fellowship one with another as Christians. The Bible says, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23 to 25, Let's hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promise. Let us consider one another to provoke unto love and the good works. Provoke is not in the sense of anger, but to encourage, to try to challenge him, to walk in, in, in love and good works. Verse 25, not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together as a matter of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see that day approaching. I believe we're in the last of the last hours. Coronavirus. Now we're having riots all across the country. By the way, if you participate in those riots, you, you're not part of the God's family. You could claim it. But the Bible says, By this shall all men know you, my disciples, if you have love one towards another. Rioting is is dealing. Rioting. There's even been some murders during this time of riot. Rioting is not what God commands. Amen. God commands us to love one another. And I'll be honest with you. If you're a white man, you don't love the white, the black race. You need to find yourself an altar and pray through. If you're a black man, you don't love the black, the white race. You better find an altar and pray through. I'm telling you what I believe. If you don't like a person just because of their race, you need to find yourself an altar. Come on. Let me tell you something. When the Lord came into my life, he made a difference. He gave me love one to, to, to other people. It doesn't matter to me whether you're black, white, red, yellow. I'm going to love mankind regardless of what color they're 
is I've met some God fearing blacks in my lifetime who really love God just as much, if not more, than me. I've met people who have the Indian Indians who love God, American Indians who love God with all their heart. Personally, I think we need to love people. Amen. Regardless of what their their color is, whether they're rich or poor, black, white, red, yellow, it doesn't matter nationality. I'll be honest with you. I believe. I don't believe in judging the person because they've come from China. They're not part of the Communist Party. Why worry about them? There's a lot of good Chinese people. We've even met God and loved God. I personally believe there's probably more people love God in China than probably any other country. I'm talking about communist China. So today, we need to love people regardless their national origin, their skin color, whether they're rich, poor, middle class. We need to love one another. The key is, are they part of God's family? We need to have fellowship one with another. I love fellowship and God-fearing saints. I love to, per to be with people of my own faith who love God with all their hearts. But it's a sad hour. It seems like there's so much division in the church world. People say, yeah, there's always been doctrinal. Hey, it's not doctrinal division I'm worrying about. Let me explain. I believe in being doctrinally sound, and yes, that should protect us from doctrinal error. Okay? I want you to know that up front. Before I say any more. But it's not the doctrinal the differences. It's really busting us up now. I find more and more personality issues. The splitting churches. You know, I don't believe that should be the case. I know if there's a false doctrine being preached in a church, I can understand it's splitting sometimes. I can understand if there's a gross sin in the church and it's not being dealt with. I can understand that at times. But when it becomes a matter where you don't like that brother who's sitting across from you in the aisle from you, or the pastor, maybe, he's, maybe you don't like his personality, maybe he's a little too hard, you know, sometimes you need some hard preaching. Let me tell you something. If that pastor cares enough to warn you, you better be thankful for him. Let me tell you something. Part of love is chastisement at times. Well, let me find out. I have two more than one Bible here. I'm closer to in this one. Sometimes that preacher preaches a little hard. Need to be the most loving person you meet met. I have found that in my lifetime. The Bible says, Hebrews chapter twelve, verse five. And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speak unto you as children. My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. For whom the Lord loveth. He chasteneth and scourgeth every son that he receiveth. For if ye endure chastening, the Lord deal for you with sons. For what son is he whom the Father chasteneth not? But if ye be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then ye are and not sons. Furthermore, we have fathers of our flesh which corrected us. We gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subject unto the Father of spirits and live? For they ch verily for a few days chastened us after their own pleasure. But he for our profit that we might be partakers of his holiness. No chastening for the present seemeth joy to be joyous but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward it yields a peaceable fruit of righteousness unto him that exercises thereby. Sometimes people don't like their pastor because he just chastens them. 
and rebukes them. We're called to to rebuke, reprove, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. But we need to love one another. You see a brother in need? Don't up, shut up your bowels of compassion. You know a brother that needs prayer? Pray with him. Whether it be for a sickness or a trouble they're having. Because today we need one another more than we ever have. Exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. I believe the Lord's getting ready to come. I'm not even going to argue it's pre, post, mid, or pre-wrath. The issue is we need to bind together. We're not fighting each other. We're fighting the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Let us exhort one another. One more thing. I'm not even following my outline. I'm, I'm off of it so far. It's not funny. <laughs> but you know, the loss of this fellowship is one of the greatest tragedies. <laughs> How many two people do we know have followed the Lord faithfully for years? But something happened. Maybe somebody in the church heard him. Maybe they got in with the wrong crowd. Maybe they... Uh, didn't think that everything we were hearing, they were hear, being preached was right. They ran off a group that wasn't right. I've seen that happen. You know what we need to do when we see a brother fall? The Bible says, Galatians chapter 6, verse 1, Brethren, if any be overtaken a fault, ye which are spiritual, Restore such a one in the spirit of meekness. Consider thyself also, lest thou also be tempted. We see a brother fall. What are we to do? We are to try reaching out for them in the spirit of love, the spirit of compassion, the spirit of meekness. Sometimes I have seen them fall. What did we do? We ran them down. We talked ugly of them behind their back. We didn't even spend five minutes in prayer for him. I believe tonight when we see a brother fall, we need to go out and try bringing him back in. That's part of the God's loving family. But brother Roy, what happens if they don't come back after two or three warnings? Then we're just to turn them over and move on. As it says in the Bible, Amen. If a brother trespass against you, go to him and him alone and talk about their fault. If he hear you, you've won thy brother. And if not, take two or three more. I'm not quote I'm just giving the directions from Matthew eighteen, fifteen through twenty. If you don't hear them, in the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word may be established. Then bring them before the church if they fail to hear the church. We treat them as a publican and a sinner. But our goal is to restore such a one in the spirit of meekness. Consider thyself also, lest we be tempted. Do you ever think you're so big that you can't fall? That's part of God's loving family. When we can think about that brother who falls, pray for the brother. Try to reach out. And by the way, one more thing. Even after they've fallen, even after we've been forced to discipline them, even as it says according to 1 Corinthians chapter 5, we turn them over to the devil. What would you do if they come back? We need to be like the like uh, the father was in Luke chapter 15. We need to be there with welcoming arms. Let them know that we care for them. That we're to try to restore them. 
We're to bear. What the next verse was, bear you one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. We need to exhort them and lift them up and hold on to them. Let us exhort one another to love and good work. Not forget that assembling ourselves together as a matter of some is exhorting one another. And so much more as you see the day approaching. I believe it's at hand. I believe there's going to be many people who will die lost amongst our ranks. People who had so much promise tell you what breaks me up is when I hear about preachers when I was a pastor years ago men and women of God who I thought had so much potential in them and today some of them are no longer with us it tears me up we need to do something they did at McDonald's years ago, the one I used to work at in Warrington, Virginia. They had an all-night meeting. No, I'm not talking about us doing what they did, an all-night meeting where we where they discussed the situation, why so many were leaving. They never called me up and asked me. I could have told them the problem. But I'll tell you what they we really need. When's the last time we've had an all-night prayer meeting for the ones who've left us? I think if we had prayed more, some of them would come back. Because I'll tell you what, I believe it's worse for the backslider than it is for those who've never known. Just gonna throw my notes aside, forget them. I don't need them. Let us love one another. Let us reach out to those who are backslidden. Because I'll tell you, it's a nightmare to be a backslider. I've had people tell me that time and time again. Let us be part of God's loving family and reach out. And today, if you're a backslider that hears this, now's the acceptable time. Today is the day of salvation. Come back to Jesus. Come back to Jesus. I hope you're like Chuck Templeton, who was a backslider years ago. He was interviewed one time. You know, here he was, a man of dementia, and his mind was fading. But one thing that I still have not forgot him saying, I miss Jesus. I hope you do too. Because if you do miss Jesus, now's the time to come back. Return. All those people in the church will never forgive me. That's why in the, in the parable of the prodigal, we see the father acting as an, as an advocate between the prodigal and the older brother. Sometimes we need deacons in our church, older saints in our church, sometimes the pastor, but we need people who act as advocates for the prodigals. They help them get things back in order. Sometimes they may have to deal with a situation. But regardless, let us be there to, be a, to reach out. Let us bear their burdens. I'm sorry, this message may not come out the way I wanted it, but today I want to challenge those out here in the church serving God to reach out and have compassion on the ones who've fallen. We're not condoning sin. No, no. We're trying to get them back. Brethren, if you 
they be overtaken of fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness. Consider thyself, lest thou also be tempted. One more verse. And I'm going to close with this. James chapter 5. Let me find it. Verse 19, 20. Brethren, if any of you do err from the faith, from the truth, and one convert him. Let him know that he that converts the sinner from the error of his way shall save a soul from death and shall hide a multitude of sins. Let me read that again. Brethren, if any of you do err from the truth and one convert him, let him know that he that converteth the sinner from the error of his way shall save a soul from death and shall hide a multitude of sins. Let's reach out to those who are fallen amongst us. God bless you.